Greetings, Sid Felicitations, YouTube, you're all the Afghan way here, and I wanted to give you guys some new information, new-ish information, about skirmishers. Now, if you've been watching my stuff, you are not a stranger to the fact that I can't stand the skirmishers in this game. I don't use them. I hardly ever take them, ever. If I were to take any, it's usually going to be a couple of Achaean Slingers, and that's it. I'm done. Wash my hands of it. We're good. I don't like the archers. I don't like. I don't like the most of the javelins. I love the javelins that are in melee units, though. They're just, they're cherry. But a lot of players out there really do like using skirmishers. So I figured I would at least give you the best information I had available. Most of it compiled by Air Runner to tell you what are the best skirmishers to take for each faction. And we're gonna go through this alphabetically. We're gonna start with Argos. Argos, right away, is one of several factions. I think all six Achaean factions get this to use Achaean Slingers. The Achaean Slingers, even compared against the Argive Slingers, the Bowmen, and the Armored Argive Slingers, the Achaean Slingers have the most damage value. That is to say, they produce the most damage for how little they cost. Whereas the best value as far as DPS, that is, their ability to deal damage quickly, that goes to the Armored Argive Slingers. The worst, because I'm also going to give you the worst skirmishers of each of each faction, hands down Bowmen. Just never take these Bowmen. Their range is lower than that of any Kean Slinger, and they're almost twice as expensive. Their ammunition is smaller. Their missile damage is smaller. Yes, that's right. You read that right. Slingers deal more damage than the Bowmen. Oh, but surely it's armor piercing. Oh, let me let me dissuade you from that. There's only three armor piercing damage on a, on a Bowman in a reload time of 11 seconds, whereas the Slinger. Two armor piercing damage, but is firing almost twice as quickly. So really, we're looking at four armor piercing from the Achaean Slingers compared to the two of the Bowmen, aren't we? Next up, I want to talk about Dardania. Dardania is a faction known for and unique for its lineup of infantry. Its melee infantry selections are amazing. So you might be thinking, okay, well, what kind of skirmishing force would you, should I bring? And I'm of the opinion the best skirmishing force you could bring for Dardania is six Dardanian mobs. I know, I'm cheating. They're not actually a skirmishing unit. They don't, they don't, they don't have any ranged weapons. They're just, they're just peasants holding spears and shields. Well, hear me out here. The Dardanian mob does the job of a skirmisher. What do you want your skirmishers to do? to whittle down the enemy numbers before the main, main infantry clash happens and to limit the impact of your opponent's skirmishers. Maybe also, uh, you know, to slow down and, and, and deal damage to, to chariots or cavalry. Well, that Dardanian mob does have a bonus versus large. Really, they're just heat-seeking arrows, if you think about it. Okay. Memes aside, let's take the let's take the Dardanian mob out of the equation. The best skirmishers I feel that Dardania can bring are harpies and harpy fiends. Just out of sheer utility alone, their damage output value on their javelins isn't isn't as good as the Anatolian slingers. It really isn't. But what they get in exchange for that is a discourage effect for 10 seconds of minus 10 morale which can make a big impact not only that they are still javelins with 100 range and have 20 armor piercing damage that's just on the harpies and when they're when when they finally spent all 12 of their javelins or in the harpy fiend's case 18 then you're dealing with a rather expert swordsman unit the harpy fiends with 46 melee attack and 160 damage with a bonus versus spearman and at their cost we're looking at about equivalent performance to say fearless swordsman 1220 160 uh weapon damage bonus versus swords 42 melee attack 46 melee attack 160 you see what i'm saying and they're a little bit cheaper they're not as they're not going to stand up in a fight as long as a fearless swordsman will but it's a very good handy unit to have. 
And as for the absolute worst skirmisher to take as as Dardania, that would be the Archer Chariot. Easily, hands down. The damage output on those, those bows do, isn't even worth mentioning. Basically, they're just a light chariot, and light chariots are almost worthless, especially when, for just 400 funds more, you could just take a heavy Trojan chariot and do much better. This brings us to Hector, also on the Pulaskian lineup. Now, with Hector, a lot fewer options than Dardania has, which is interesting when you think about it, because Dardania, you think, you don't often think about his, his large skirmishing lineup. Hector, even less so. Hector is a faction known for its very, very slow, plotty, heavy shielded and speared units, and also needs a lot of love right now. So, when you're looking at your skirmishing selection, the only unit you really want to be spending any time with is the renowned archer. This unit has the best damage value that it can produce. It does it has actually has the best DPS value it can produce as well. And the unit to avoid also, just like just like with Aeneas, avoid the Archer Chariots. Now, I say the renowned archers are your best bet here, but even still, I probably wouldn't ever take them. And the Trojan Slingers are just too expensive for what they bring to the table. The renowned archers, I also think, even at 700 points, I still think they're too expensive, considering how much money you have to dip into for your infantry just to be competitive. Next on the list is Hippolyta. And Hippolyta has such a very wide selection of skirmishers. It's hard to process just which ones are worth it, which ones aren't. I do want to give a little bit of special attention to point out a couple of the ones that I really think you should avoid, but aren't necessarily the worst ones. In particular, Warriors of Artemis, too expensive, low damage, not very good melee stats, and they are a Vanguard deploy unit. They just don't really fit anywhere, in my opinion. Also, I tend to not really enjoy the Centaur Elders. I know other people are allowed, you know, other opinions on this. They do have 125 melee damage. But again, that 145 range, 50 armor, no shield. They, they just feel like a bit too much of a, of a sink pit when it comes to funds versus damage output. As for the best units to take, honestly, cheaper is better with Hippolyta. The best value you can get out of your, your ranged contingent is right here in your Stone Slingers and Shielded Stone Slingers. Shielded Stone Slingers, 180 range. Stone Slingers doing just fine. Why in particular Stone Slingers? Well, let's compare them to one of the worst options you can take with Hippolyta, the Hippotoxitai. You might be thinking, but hey, they're more expensive. They should be better. Look at their melee damage. It's 160. Yeah, they're, they're, they're okay, actually, for all of these things. But for less than... For less than the cost of a Hippotoxitai, I could take four shielded... Uh, I'm sorry, four Stone Slingers and have, actually have more damage output in their missiles than what the Hippotoxitai can bring with their 28 ammunition. That's right, the Stone Slingers, four Stone Slingers, will outperform a Hippotoxitai in ranged combat. Shielded Stone Slingers do the same thing, but with the extra 200 funds, you actually get a little bit of a faster rate in your damage over time. So the Shielded Stone Slingers, also a good option. Your worst choices, your absolute bottom dirt worst choices, again, the Light Archer Chariot, no big surprise there, and like I said, the Hippotoxitai, because they're just so expensive for how little damage they do. Use them more as, like I would say, use them more as a cavalry option first, and then an archer second. Don't just count on them to tear apart your opponents from range. Ithaca also has a very wide selection of mythical skirmishers, missile cavalry chariots, and of course, missile infantry and a majority of their melee infantry also happens to carry javelins, making Ithaca one of the most damaging missile-based factions in this game. However, when it comes to what is the best skirmish unit for Ithaca, the answer to me is easy and obvious, and that's the Cyclops. Okay, I'm cheating again, I know, but again, please consider that the Cyclops has a, has a missile here, with 130 meter range that deals area of effect damage and refreshes every 30 seconds with infinite ammunition. 
Regardless, though, what it boils down to is the best skirmisher, like, dedicated skirmisher and the worst dedicated skirmisher, those answers are the Kianslinger, yet again, Value City, and the worst is the Bowman. Absolutely crap. But there's also some others that I want to highlight because it's not always going to be about the Achaean Slingers and the Bowmen. Again, skirmish chariots in general, don't use them for skirmishing. Use them for being a chariot. Sirens, a really, really unique tool and also very effective for Ithaca considering just how much of Ithaca's roster has to do with manipulating the enemy. And that Siren's lure ability can be really useful. But the one that, that wins my heart is the renowned Island Skirmisher. We've seen in my live streams how a renowned Island Skirmisher can surprise you with its 160 melee damage, 44 melee defense, and 35 melee attack, as well as their armor piercing 42 damage javelins. The renowned Island Skirmisher is a boss. Next up is Lycia. Lycia has a very small selection of skirmisher units, and it's worth pointing out that this isn't all that they have. They also happen to have some very good javelin throwing melee infantry, and particularly the renowned Kopish fighters. With their their javelins can absolutely melt a target. However, we're here to talk about the dedicated skirmishers, and the best ones you can get, no big surprise coming from me, is the Eastern Slinger. Same price point as an Ikean Slinger, has less damage overall compared to an Achaean Slinger, but actually has a higher DPS rate than an Achaean Slinger. They're very comparable units. The worst units, again, the Lycian Wing Chariot, Archer Chariot, Heavy Lycian Chariot, don't use them as skirmishers, use them as chariots. Use them as chariots. Um, as well, though, as in the, the and this one actually kind of surprised me when I looked at the statistics, the Armored Lycian Archers are actually a little bit disappointing. They don't perform so hot. They have great range for being a bow unit, and their damage seems really, really nice, but the problem is the reload time's just a little bit too slow compared Your to hero. most Slinger units, attack. and their range is equivalent. Now, that's not to say they don't have their place. An Armored Lycian Archer can be a really good pick if you're playing against somebody who only brought medium chariots. But, again, usually your opponents are bringing heavy chariots anyway, and all of your skirmishers are doomed. Next on the Achaean roster is, of course, Mycenae. And yet again, some we see some of the same top performers and same bottom performers. The Achaean Slingers, again, just have the most value for the, for the damage that they produce. And worst stuff is, of course, the Bowman. I'm not just gonna leave it there. There are only four more options, so it's easy to tell you about another top performer and another bottom performer. Topping the charts as far as most damage potential overall are the Bows of Mycenae. Their value compared to their damage is a little bit lower, and it's actually the lower end for almost all of the units. But the other unit to really just avoid is the Light Javelin Man. And this one actually kind of surprised me. I thought they would perform better, but ultimately their cost just doesn't equate for the statistics. And their melee stats just aren't good enough, even with 125 weapon damage and 860 cost and only 35 armor. They're not going to last too terribly long. Now for Paris, being a dedicated skirmishing faction, you would expect to see a lot of really strong performance out of their units. But when it boils down to it, there are a lot of and I do mean a lot of bad skirmishers in the Paris of Troy roster. I'm going to try covering them all. Light skirmishers, short range, nowhere near enough damage. Slingers, too expensive compared to their counterparts in the cheap slinging department to actually be considered worthwhile. Archers, just as bad as Achaean Bowmen. Warriors of Artemis, carbon copied from the others that I've already mentioned, also just bad. Trojan Prince is way too expensive for what they do, and the Trojan Nobles actually do everything a Trojan Prince does damage-wise and better for being cheaper. Archer Chariots, we've talked enough about those. The Trojan Noble Chariots, again, so expensive, so little damage. And the Giant Bowmen, you want them to be good, 
but their melee attack stats aren't that great anyway. So what's good? Well, what's good is an exemplary Trojan Slinger. My best friend and yours. These guys just have it going on for them. They also have better melee attack than, than the giant bowmen, and their damage is 125. Also, in the surprising twist department, the Trojan Nobles are okay, but again, the exemplary Trojan Slinger is just better. Look at the stat difference. It's more health, more speed, they have a shield, more melee attack, more melee defense, more charge bonus. Then also with the uh, range stats, longer range, more missile damage, less ammo. That's it. That's the only difference. There you go. Pedicilia's roster is really, really cool, and their skirmishers are also just as cool. And you might get swept up in the glamour of all of these amazing Amazonian horsewomen with javelins, but don't. These are the worst units you can bring as far as skirmishing potential to cost. They just can't get the damage done. The Huntresses at least have the Discourage effect that has you know, that's going for them. But so do the Harpies, and Harpies are, you know, honestly, similar price point. Harpy Fiend's cheaper than the Mounted Huntresses, and they're just better in melee anyway. But the unit that I really want you to take almost every time is the Skirmisher. This Light Javelin unit has so much damage value, it's actually pretty incredible. The worst picks? Toxaris an awful choice just not dealing the damage that it needs to at all just take look look at the damage drop off here yeah it's 75 more range but this is a this is a no-brainer to me honorable mention goes to the huntresses who had only 600 funds also bring a discouraging javelin oh yeah and forget chariot javelins but don't forget the chariot part of them thigh is really cool everybody loves thigh -um. Nobody really spends much time looking at the Thyan skirmishers, though. And I do want to point out a couple of interesting things here. First of all, again, Akeen Slingers, solid pick, really good. You won't ever be worried about their, their damage output. Comparatively good is the Aeginian Javelinman. For the cost at being twice as expensive as an Akeen Slinger, they almost do, almost do exactly twice as good as an Achaean Slinger. So they both turn out being very good value-wise. Another good unit to look at is Renowned Armored Slinger. Does Performs really well with 180 range and 44 missile damage. You can't go wrong with this unit. Units you can go wrong with, Heavy Achaean Bowmen, not so hot, and, and the Bowmen absolutely are disaster bad. Never take the Bowmen. The heavy javelin throwers on paper seem okay, but there's a problem with this unit. The game tries telling you that they are a heavy weight class infantry and they even give you this little hexagon banner that says they're heavy, but they actually perform like a medium infantry, not like a heavy in the game. I'm not sure I'm not sure if it's just that the tooltips are wrong or that the unit card is wrong, but they don't agree, and we need to figure out if they actually are treated like a heavy infantry or not. And then for being a, a heavy infantry unit that only has 55 armor and a 20% missile block, it's they're, they're pretty much a joke. Ah, Salamis. Salamis has some very interesting units here, and this is the first time, the first first time that we see an Achaean faction that actually brings a unit that is better value-wise than an Achaean Slinger. And that is the Locrian Slinger right here. Coming in at cheaper than two Achaean Slingers, their damage value is phenomenal. Their damage output is phenomenal. Their DPS value is phenomenal. And in all three categories, it does better than the Achaean Slinger. As well, and I couldn't actually put it up in the unit roster, we have Noble Stratacus here. Again, it's a so-so unit, but the other top performing units, the ones that you really, really want to pay attention to for Salamis, are going to be, is going to be Loyal Chromis, Farseeing Archilocos. 
the damage that Archilocos does and the fact that it's also a discouraging javelin and the value you get out of Loyal Chromis at the exact same cost as a as a Trojan Noble, you can't go wrong. A unit you can go wrong with, Bowman. And the best skirmishing unit for Sparta is, drumroll please, the Cyclops. You knew I was going to say it. No, uh, honestly though, it's it's the Achaean Slinger is the best. The worst is, it's a toss-up between the Light Bowman and the Warriors of Artemis. And then an honorable mention to the Renowned Armored Slinger. And again, I'm just saying, the Cyclops. Just saying. Warriors have been rough. So that is it for the total breakdown of every faction skirmishers. The best units and the worst units. I hope that this information is useful to you. My disclaimer is this. I frankly feel that even knowing that Sparta has a really good option, the renowned armored slinger, I'm still, I'd much rather spend that money and a little bit extra on a Laconian swordsman instead. The melee vastly outperforms the missile in this game. This isn't Warhammer. This isn't, this isn't Rome 2. Focus on your melee infantry, and if you have some funds left over, and if you think you're gonna, ca you know, catch your opponent out with some units that won't do so well against sustained missile fire, that is when you dip into uh, a a renowned armored slinger, or or if you just have the funds left over, a key and slingers. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you found this information useful. Ta-ta, I love you all, and I'll see you guys in the next one.